Okay. All right. Let's do this. Okay. Um, this one's a little tricky. It's a little tricky for beginning for beginners. All right. So we're going to look at how the pH of a solution affects the solubility of a salt in that solution. So how is solubility affected by pH? All right. So we're going to have to talk about some things that apparently they're expecting you to know before we get started. We have some salts. Oops, I got to share my screen too, don't I? Um, all right. Um, I'm having a really hard time figuring out the best way to approach this, guys. So hang in there with me, okay? Um, some salts have acidic properties. Some salts have acidic basic properties, all right? Properties. Now let's simplify this. If it contains the, we the conjugate of a weak acid or base or insoluble compound, I would want to say. That would be maybe like a, a common ion, not a conjugate. Um, then the salt has acidic slash basic properties and its solubility will be affected by pH. Okay? Okay. So remember that we've got conjugates of weak acids or bases. When that is present in a salt, we will see that it has acidic or basic properties and it is also affected by the pH. What is affected? Its solubility is affected by the pH. Okay, so that's what's important there. Let's look at some examples, okay? Let's look, let's identify whether salts are acidic, basic, or neutral. So um, the first one I'm going to give you is NaF, all right? Well, I want you to visualize, in, in, envision, visualize this guy dissociating into his ions, all right? All right, now I want you to put water down here as in terms of H and OH. Now, let me go over here. Let me relate, go to acids and bases real quick, okay? Acids, um, low pH, right, below seven at, at normal temperature, um, excess, hydrogen ions, right? The lower the pH, the more the hydrogen bases, pH above seven, more OHs than Hs, right? And over here you have less OHs, all right? If in fact you are neutral, then the Hs are equal to the OHs, all right? So water is neutral because it's HOH. We're going to get an acids and bases. So some of us are frustrated that this is here. Like, shouldn't we have talked about this already? But I guess now's the time. So here's my water, right? Now, does H want to go with F? Yes. Right, always positives with negatives. Because that forms HF, which is a weak acid. Because it is a weak acid, it will form 
right? Weak acids like to stay together. Weak means it doesn't dissociate. So when I put this salt into water and I produce these ions, what happens is I form some HF and then I have an excess of hydroxide ions left behind. So this is actually a basic salt, okay? Why? Because it contains the conjugate base of a weak acid, okay? Okay, let's look at something else. I'm going to have to move this down. Okay, let's look at an acidic salt. They're not as easy to find. Okay, um, I'll say they're a lot harder to go by. Let's see what example they're going to use here. Uh, yeah, it's not going to be as easy to come up with this example, but I will. PBCL2, all right? Wants to dissociate into lead and chloride, but it's not very good at it, all right? And it has a low KSP. We wanna know does it have acidic or basic properties when dissolved in water? So let's put our water ions down here. Water does not readily ionize, but some ions can cause it to partially ionize. Now, does the H want to go with the chloride? No, let me, let me make that a little bit neater. No. This forms HCl, a strong acid. Therefore, it will not form, right? Because the strong acid will immediately dissociate. So HCl does not come together in solution. So we do not have anything reacting with our anion, right? It is the conjugate of a strong acid. Conjugate of strong acid. Therefore, no acidic or basic properties, okay? Um, all right, if I look at my other ion, I've got OH, and if you went with anything, it would be with the lead, and that would form lead to hydroxide, which is a salt, all right, and this is insoluble, has a very low KSP, okay, therefore it will form, okay, and what we will see in this reaction when we dissolve the salt in water, I'm trying to figure out what color I want, is we will form PB, oops, OH2 solid, and that hydroxide, I mean hydrogen ion, will be left behind. So what we have here is a salt that has acidic properties, right? Because of the hydrogen ions that it has caused to be in excess, right? And that's an acid. Over here, we had the hydroxide ions that were in excess, and that's a base, 
So that was a basic salt. And down here we have what's called an um, acidic salt, okay? Um, and what it, it, it contains, now this isn't an acid base because this is not an acid or a base, right? And it does not contain the conjugate of a weak um, base. But if it did, it would have the same properties. What it contains is a cation of an insoluble salt. Actually, hydroxide, right? That's what it has. Okay. Um, now, if I had some sodium nitrate, okay? And I dissolved it in water. First of all, it's perfectly soluble. It is not insoluble. It is not an equilibrium process. And I dissolved it in water. Therefore, there was a little fight or, or something going on to see if anything else would want to happen. And what we would compare would be the H with the NO3. And you need to realize HNO3 is a strong acid, therefore will not form in solution, right? It will remain ionized. Okay. And then our other option of anything happening would be here. And NaOH is a strong base. Therefore, uh, will not form in solution. Same as over there, okay? It will remain ionized. It will remain ionized, okay? Um, all right, let's finish this up. Um, so we just have ions floating around the solution. So the lesson there is when your salt contains the conjugate of a strong acid, conjugate of strong, right? It's only when you have a conjugate of those weeks. It does not have acidic or basic properties. Um, actually, that would be, if anything, it would be a basic, it does not have basic properties. And we have an alkali metal over here, right, which is the conjugate, no, uh, it is the cation, mm. it contains an alkali metal the cation of a soluble compound. I'm gonna leave it at that, I don't know, okay. Now, for example, if my salt had NH4 chloride, right, NH4 plus plus Cl negative, right, um, that is not going to form, and that is not going to form. However, NH4, plus himself will dissociate. But we'll get into that more when we talk about acids and bases, all right? And actually, that's our next unit. Okay, um, so let's look at some practice, or let's look at this real quick. But I wanna look at this diagram here um, and keep it simple. So what we have here is PBF2, and we wanna know how does adding an acid affect its P its solubility, right? So this is his solubility dissociation equation. If I add an acid to this, right? By adding an acid, I'm adding hydrogen ions. What I see is the addition of the hydrogen ions will remove will remove or cause a decrease 
by removing and the concentration of fluoride ions in the solution. Now, thus causing what? Will Q now be greater than or less than K? Well, K, Q, we have less products. Q will be and solubility in fat. I just wanna make sure solubility increases. Why? Why? Because, oops, because reaction will shift towards product side where there are more ions to replace ions in order to reestablish equilibrium. I hope you understand. I know I get messy, but just get thinking. You can write messy too, all right? Okay. Let's lastly, I know I told you, be ready for this, look at the next scenario. And that is where we have PBI2. Again, and oh no, no, we had PBF2 last time, and we're going to add hydrogen, right? We're adding an acid. We are decreasing the pH, decreasing pH both times, right? We decrease the pH. So by adding acid, pH goes down, hydrogen goes up. So does anything here want the extra hydrogen that was added. Well, what does this form? Forms HI, strong acid, therefore will not happen. We are not affecting the amount of ions that are in the solution, nothing's being removed. So it will not affect the change in pH the solubility, the addition of the hydrogen, the changing of the pH will not affect the solubility. However, over here, the addition of the hydrogen caused fluoride ions to be removed from the solution, forming the weak acid HF, forcing the equilibrium to move shift towards the reactant side, causing an increase in the solubility. So by affecting the pH, we increased the, the, the solubility, particularly decreasing the pH. If we were to slowly increase the pH of this, it would minimize the change in the solubility, all right? So the lower the pH, the more soluble. Because the lower the pH, the more hydrogens we have, the more fluorides removed, the more soluble it is, the more we force it in that direction. Okay, so we can force it by removing, we can remove by adding an acid. Good job if you understood. Consider the dissociation equation of iron three hydroxide. And which of the following pHs would you expect iron three hydroxide to be most soluble? Pause, think about it. All right, pause and think about it because I'm about to tell you. Okay, um, lowest pH. Lowest pH, therefore greatest number of hydro hydrogen ions. Um, each H plus will remove an OH, okay? Forming HOH or water, which loves to stay together. OH is the strongest base there is. It will react with every single hydrogen to present in order to make water. If an OH is present and if an H is present, they're going to come together. Okay? 
So because there are more at the lower pH, more H's, therefore more OH ions removed, causing a greater shift towards products to reestablish. Notice I always say that because they like that. Why are we shifting to get back to equilibrium? Or to get to equilibrium um, and an increase in the solubility, right? Because the more we move towards the products, the more we're dissolving. That is what is happening in this equation. All right, so we would see a greater increase at that lower pH because we would have, we wouldn't be, fur, we would be taken further away from equilibrium. So we would have to proceed more further in the forward direction to get to equilibrium. The solubility product KSP of PBOH2 is, what is the molar solubility of a saturated solution of PBOH2? Okay, good. They're just trying to confuse you. Um, they're just asking for S, all right? They're just asking for S. Saturated means as much of it has dissolved as possible. So we've already done this, but there's no reason not to do it again because we've been asked to do it and practice is where your skills get refined, right? And you build that um, memory. Okay, well, I know that KSP equals 1.2 times 10 to the negative 15th. This is gonna be S, this is gonna be 2S, it's gonna be S times 2S squared. That will be 4S cubed equals 1.2 times 10 to the negative 15th. So just take that divided by four and raise it to the one third, right? Did I do that? Yeah, I already got that right here. Um, no, I don't. Uh, 1.2 second E negative 15 divided by four equals raised, oops, raised to the parentheses one divided by three, close parentheses. You're looking at 6.9 times 10 to the negative sixth. That's M in pure water. Okay, letter B. What is the molar solubility of lead to hydroxide in a solution with a pH of? And then it's left to tell us what hydroxide will be. So, because once again, you would need to know that in order to solve this problem, but you haven't learned that yet in this course. And we're following the the course, so it's frustrating that this should have, probably should have been saved for later. Anywho, remember this is our solid. We don't need to know how much we have, but I see that because my pH is 11, therefore it's not neutral, which we always would assume they were unless told otherwise, has a hydroxide ion concentration of 1.00 times 10 to the negative third. So I initially already have a hydroxide ion concentration. Simply means I have a common ion, right? So what's that going to do to my solubility? Should it get greater than, less than, or equal to? All right, well, C plus S plus 2S, E, S, 1.00 times 10 to the negative third plus 2s. All right, we will assume this 2s addition um, term to be negligible, uh, right? Because uh, our KSP is to the negative 15. Remember we said that if it's negative five or below, we can assume it to be negligible. Um, we'll talk about that more we had weak acids and bases. Um, so I have KSP, which is what 1.2 times 10 to the negative 15th equals 
S 1.00 times 10 to the negative three. All right, solve for S and we've got 1.2 times 10 to the negative nine. Is that right? Oh, oh, that's gotta be squared, squared, squared. I knew those answers didn't, right? So, okay. So let's look at the, the solubility. It is now a negative nine. We had a common ion. It is much less than it was without the presence of the common ion. So not quite acid base, but still good practice. Letter C, explain the change in molar solubility exhibited in A and B. Well, we just did. Um, in B, there's a common ion, um, causes Q to be much greater than K. This reaction needs to decrease the amount of ions in order to get to equilibrium. We will see a shift towards the products and a decrease in the solubility. Um, seriously, page 20 of your notes is, is a very good um, review of this, okay? See ya.